So good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Cardiac Emergency Planning Webinar for Rural Colorado Schools. I am Dr. Takiya Wilson, the Vice President of Health Strategies for the American Heart Association of Colorado. The interest in this webinar has been just incredible, and we, along with our partners at Children's Hospital of Colorado, are very excited to help your school become better prepared for cardiac emergency. The American Heart Association is also excited that we can provide the equipment to train a generation of lifesavers in CPR and AED usage through our CPR in schools kits. We know that the average response time for emergencies in rural areas is 14 minutes, with nearly one in 10 victims waiting almost half an hour for help. In a cardiac emergency, every second counts. So we appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedules today to learn more about writing and implementing a cardiac emergency response plan. Now today, many American Heart Association resources will be shared, but I would also like to let you know that I am a local resource and I'm happy to share expertise beyond cardiac emergencies. We know that during the pandemic, schools have been faced with extraordinary challenges for both their students and their staff. So we have ramped up our resources to support nutrition programs and schools to combat food insecurity and provide guidance on tobacco and vaping issues as youth are turning to these substances even more. You are dealing with unprecedented stress and challenges. And we just want to say thank you to all of our schools for all you do for our communities. It is now my pleasure to introduce Dr. Chris Rausch, who is a pediatric cardiologist at Children's Hospital Colorado. Dr. Rausch serves as the medical director for the Pediatric Cardiology Network of Care and Outreach, as well as the medical director for the Project Adam Colorado. Dr. Rausch, the virtual stage is now yours. So Dr. Rausch currently is not able to join us, but he is hoping to hop on um, a little bit later. He was tied up in a couple of meetings, but my name is Courtney White. I am the Project Adam Colorado Coordinator here at Children's Hospital Colorado. And thank you so much, Dr. Wilson, for that amazing introduction. But let's get started and let's discuss if your school is prepared for a cardiac emergency and how we can better serve the needs within your school district. So a couple objectives that we want to go over today is understanding what sudden cardiac arrest is and why we are targeting schools in this initiative. Secondly, we will discuss Project Adam and this nonprofit organization here at Children's Hospital Colorado, as well as throughout the nation, and go over heart safe school designation and what that means for each school district. Finally, we'll go over some resources that are available to you um, to help you and assist you in developing your public access defibrillation program, as well as maintaining and sustaining that program. So first, what is sudden cardiac arrest? And it's important to recognize the signs and symptoms of how a sudden cardiac arrest can present itself. So the most important thing to know is that is it is an electrical malfunction within the heart. It happens suddenly, it happens unexpectedly, and the victim may have abnormal breathing, um, may have no breathing at all, and it may actually look like a seizure in its presentation. If this is witnessed, most importantly, we wanna start um, CPR called 911 and obtain the nearest AED if it is available. However, the most important thing is really recognizing those signs and symptoms. Moving on to the cardiac chain of survival, the steps that um, should be taken place 
if a cardiac arrest is witnessed is again, activation of that emergency response, calling 911, starting high quality CPR. And we will go over that in detail as Devin will mention later on. Defibrillation by an AED. So we will want to obtain that and place it on the victim in less than two minutes from the witness the rest, providing advanced resuscitation and post-cardiac arrest care and hopefully recovery and having the patient discharged from the hospital with a good neurological outcome. So what is an AED? This is a portable device. Um, it is electronic that when it is properly applied to a, to a patient, to a victim, it automatically diagnoses a potentially life-threatening heart rhythm, mostly known as ventricular fibrillation. The only way to restore a normal rhythm after someone goes into ventricular fibrillation is to deliver a shock. The most important thing to know from this image is that the survival rates decrease by 10% with each minute of delayed defibrillation. So if a, if a victim does not have access to an AED um, and EMS doesn't respond, the, the neurological outcome can be pretty devastating. So why target schools? On any given day, approximately 20% of a community is within the school walls. In Colorado, there are currently 178 school districts, and of these, 146 actually meet the definition of rural or small rural. It has been studied and published that the average EMS response time is actually 14 minutes in rural settings with nearly one of 10 encounters awaiting almost a half hour for the arrival of EMS personnel. So if an AED is not available within your school, then the chances of survival decrease significantly. An article was published back in 2017 um, and this article really looked at state level implementation of various health and safety policies. And within this article, they looked at four different um, categories that could lead to sudden death. And those four were sudden cardiac arrest, head injuries, exertional heat stroke, and then having the appropriate medical coverage and emergency preparedness. So it's important to note that sudden death and catastrophic injuries can and often occur during sports. And so having these health and safety practices in place can hopefully lead to better outcomes. And so this article essentially ranked each of the 50 states plus the District of Columbia and presented a rubric and where did Colorado land in the rankings? dead last. So we were 51 of 51. So needless to say, we have lots of improvement. You may wonder what state laws are currently in place for the state of Colorado regarding CPR and AEDs. And currently there are only two. And so the first one regards AED placement in schools. And this just encourages school districts to acquire AEDs as well as maintain the AEDs on public school grounds. However, it is not mandated at this time. Secondly, there's a school staff and CPR and AED training law. And this law pertains to coaches of any athletic program that is employed by a local education provider and they must be currently certified in CPR and AED use. Currently, no state laws um, are in effect pertaining to school cardiac emergency response plans or conducting any cardiac emergency drills. In July of 2021, there was a statement released by the American Academy of Pediatrics. And this statement really looked at sudden death in the young and provided information really focused towards the primary care provider. However, it can pertain to more than just that specialty. The topics that were included in this policy statement included establishing the PCP's role in primary prevention, 
establishing goals for a cardiac screening that is comprehensive. And then thirdly, establishing the PCP's role in secondary prevention. Within this policy statement, they essentially referred to the cardiac emergency response plan and how essentially what should be included to ensure that it is of quality and, um, and essentially included all of the necessary components. And so going through these six parts, um, you want to ensure you have an effective communication system. So if you have a large school, you know, and we have a cardiac arrest that occurs on the field, how does the office know that a cardiac arrest happened on the field and how do we get the team to that victim to ensure that we have everyone appropriately um, responding to that event. Training of, you know, a team of responders that can respond in the case of a cardiac emergency access to an AED, which we've discussed. Acquisition of necessary emergency equipment. We wanna make sure that we have all of the necessary equipment in place prior to EMS arrival. And then coordination and integration of your AED program with your local EMS system. So we have found that coordination with the local EMS is actually extremely helpful and EMS can be a great resource for your school district and the development of your plan and the maintaining of your plan. And so always kind of keep that in, in the back of your mind. And then finally, actually practicing this response plan, putting it into action before an emergency happens. And so maybe including this in your staff awareness days, um, including this, you know, even before students are in session and really just running a practice drill. And what does that look like? And what are the challenges that may need to be discussed so that when an emergency does happen, that plan has been practiced and is effective. So also in this policy statement, um, a couple of other points that are necessary in my mind to discuss is it really put a time frame on the collapse to an EMS call time of less than one minute and then a collapse to a first shock by an AED of less than three minutes. And so that is really important to know, especially if you're practicing this drill, how many AEDs are there on campus? Where are those AEDs located? And ensuring that all staff are aware of those locations. It's recommended that at least 10% of staff um, and 50% of your physical education staff have current CPR and AED certification. And then this policy statement actually suggests two successful emergency response drills conducted on an annual basis. So then discussing Project Adam. So Project Adam began in 1999 out of Wisconsin after the death of Adam Lemmel, who was a 17 year old high school student who collapsed while playing basketball. During his game where he collapsed an AED was not available and he suffered a cardiac arrest. Since its inception in 1999, Project Adam has saved over 200 lives across the country. Currently, today, as it stands, there are 30 established programs across the country in 23 states. Um, we have a few more in progress, but um, we are growing and it is wonderful to see. And then in collaboration with Children's Hospital Colorado, Project Adam Colorado is really committed to helping these schools implement and sustain public access defibrillation programs. The goals are really to increase the awareness of sudden cardiac arrest. How does it present? What does it look like in real life? Provide staff with the necessary resources to ensure that they are the best prepared for a cardiac emergency. Offer any guidance in helping planning, you know, a program within your school. 
providing necessary templates for policies that may be, um, need to be in place, uh, assisting with acquiring training in CPR, acquiring possibly uh, equipment if more equipment is needed, and then really collaborating with the staff to ensure that there is an emergency response plan in place and ensuring that all staff are aware of this emergency plan. When looking at cardiac arrest preparedness, especially within the schools, what should, what should that include? And that, again, includes CPR training. Ideally, we would like students to be included in this, not only just you know, staff and teachers, but really including students. Having a cardiac emergency response plan and that all staff are aware of this plan, having access to AEDs, and if more AEDs are needed to ensure that that cardiac arrest victim has an AED applied in less than three minutes, then we can definitely assist in that. Performing drills, that's very important. And then um, we know that some individuals may be at an increased risk of suffering a cardiac arrest. And so ensuring those students have emergency action plans in place, in particular for those individual students. So Project Adam really wants to assist schools as well as communities and, and local programs in establishing these emergency plans, putting them into action to ensuring the incidence of a sudden cardiac arrest does not lead to death. Lives are saved when schools are prepared and we, we know that, we have seen it. And so we really want to ensure that staff are well equipped um, and knowing how to respond in the setting of an emergency. Because of this, Project Adam has instituted the Heart Safe School designation. And this is attained by schools upon successful implementation of a quality sudden cardiac arrest program that includes awareness, training, plans, and drills. Joe Lemel, who is the father of Adam Lemel, had been quoted, Adam is still making a difference. There was a door that was opened and I had to make a choice. The choice was obvious. I can't help my son, but I can help yours. So how do I get started? On the Project Adam website, which is just projectadam.com, there is a Heart Safe School checklist. This checklist will also be sent to you in a follow-up email after this webinar, but this really serves as an initial checklist for the schools and seeing exactly where you stand in the various areas that we hope you know, a program includes. So that includes the AEDs, the cardiac emergency response team, the cardiac emergency response plan, training, and then cardiac emergency response drills. Also on the website, there are various manuals, toolkits, templates, videos, all things for you to use that are free. So please use them, they are available um, and we can definitely help guide you to those, those particular templates if needed. Some other available resources that are out there, um, obviously Project Adam and the American Heart Association. There is Parent Heart Watch, which is an organization that is made up of mostly parents who are um, parents of you know, victims of sudden cardiac arrest. There's the Citizen CPR Foundation. There's the SADS Foundation. They are a great resource for individual healthcare plans for individual students that may have a higher risk of um, having a cardiac arrest and then the American Red Cross. Next, I wanna show you um, a video and I feel like this, this shows you how important it is to have a comprehensive plan. Um, so this is the story of Claire, and she was Project Adam's 100th save. I'll try it one more time, and you can just let me know. But the 100th save was from a girl named Claire Crawford. She was playing volleyball. It's, you know, CPR stories and saves are really interesting to me because 
it seems that a lot of things have to go right. But it's not really luck, it's more preparedness. And as long as you're prepared to respond in case of an emergency, it can be it can happen anywhere at any time. So that's why it's called a sudden cardiac arrest. So she was playing volleyball she went, and it shows her dad had set up a video. It was senior night. She's the only senior on the team. And they're playing a team that they thought they would play again in the playoffs. So they were going to use it for scouting video as well. He set up the tripod, pushed the play button on the camera, and it captured the entire collapse of sudden cardiac arrest and her rescue. Wow, I don't know about you guys, but every time I see that video, and I've seen it multiple times, my heart just sinks and drops um, when Claire hits hits the floor, and it just amazes me that um, because this school was prepared, um, her life was saved, and just how impactful it is to that particular family. It just it it honestly it, it um, gets me every single time, and just speaks to the importance of having a plan in place. We know that you know having an AED isn't enough. Knowing CPR isn't enough. It's really that having all of these components in a cardiac emergency plan um, where you are practicing these drills and everyone on the team knows what to do in that emergency. And so um, just wanna introduce myself. My name is Devin Dan and I'm a community CPR manager with the American Heart Association. And um, we're excited. We've had just a tremendous, um, like Tahia said, a tremendous response from our rural schools in Colorado. And we're so excited to work with you to create these plans and provide those resources um, to be able to train your staff and your students. Um, you know, our goal would be for you to use these resources to train, you know, everyone that comes on your campus that wants to be trained. But we thought we, we know we have a lot of nurses, um, but we thought we might have some additional staff that might not know the steps of hands-only CPR. So we thought we'd be amiss if we didn't share just a quick but thorough overview of what hands-only CPR is. So currently, um, and sadly, less than half of people who experience an out-of-hospital cardiac arrest receive immediate bystander help. So what that means is if I collapse in cardiac arrest, my chance of even having someone immediately apply compressions is less than 50%, which we know that we can change with more education and teaching more people and empowering more people to act in an emergency situation. So I just wanna share the good news. There is some good news because CPR can double or triple a person's chance of survival after a cardiac arrest. And hands-only CPR is so incredibly easy to, to learn um, and to share with others. There really are two main steps. If you don't remember any of the rest of what I'm gonna share, remember you always wanna call 911 and you wanna push hard and fast in the center of the chest. And I'm not sure about the age ranges in, in the uh, group today, but um, staying alive by the Bee Gees or maybe for the younger audiences, um, Crazy in Love by Beyonce uh, would be the beat that you would press to. So a lot of people, are just so concerned and, and want to know, well, when do I use CPR? And Courtney shared some great, uh, you know, warning signs or things to look for. But our science shows that when in doubt, start CPR, because the risk of harming someone from compressions is so minimal compared to the risk of not giving compressions if someone is in cardiac arrest. Um, so just remember, if you're in doubt, begin compressions, there will be some sign from the person if they don't need CPR. They'll push your hand away or they will, um, you know, begin to verbalize or wince to let you know, okay, it's not cardiac arrest. 
But just a, a, a quick fact here, there is a difference between heart attack and cardiac arrest. A heart attack is more of a circulation problem. So you have a blockage, say in an artery, and because of that blockage, uh, blood flow and oxygen supply is cut off to that section of the heart, which causes that heart to become damaged and, and not function correctly. It may cause a cardiac arrest, but they are, they are different. A cardiac arrest is an electrical problem like Courtney talked about, and to be able to get um, the fibrillation back into a normal rhythm, you do need to apply a, a shock with an AED. And we'll talk more about AEDs as well. Um, one thing to know that is uh, you're protected by the Good Samaritan law. If, if you're acting in good faith to save a person's life and you break a rib or the person doesn't survive, then you can't be held liable um, for, for trying to help save that person. So just something to remember. So a couple of um, steps leading up to CPR. So you always wanna make sure that the scene is safe. You want to tap and shout, hey, hey, are you okay? To see if the person is responding. If there's no response, you can't tell if the person is breathing or uh, like Courtney said, they may be um, you know, breathing, but it, it's not normal breathing. Go ahead and call 911, send someone to get the AED and go ahead and start those compressions. So a little bit of information about compressions. You wanna push hard and fast in the center of the chest we talked about. You want to allow the chest to come back up to its original position. Uh, when I'm teaching CPR, this is often what I see people doing incorrectly. They will um, position themselves over the body of the victim to be able to get a hard compression of about two inches, but then they will not let the chest completely rise back up to, for the heart to fill back with blood. So you wanna make sure that you let that chest rise completely back to its original position. And then again, you wanna push at a rate of 100 to 120 beats per minute. So I have a video real quick. Hey everyone, I'm Jocko Sims. You might know me as Dr. Reynolds on the show, New Amsterdam. You know, I've learned quite a bit playing a doctor. For example, I've learned that when someone is having a cardiac arrest, every minute counts and survival depends on immediately receiving CPR. Did you know that 70% of cardiac arrests happen in homes? And with many of us spending more and more time at home these days, it's all the more important to know what to do in a cardiac emergency. Let me show you a technique that I learned from the American Heart Association. It's called hands-on CPR. It involves two easy steps that can save the life of someone you love. Here's how it goes. Hey guys. So if you see a teen or an adult collapsed and unresponsive, first call 911 or ask someone to. Second, you want to push hard and fast in the center of the chest. Now, you might be asking how hard and how fast. That's a good question. You want to go two inches deep and about as fast as an upbeat song like Stand Alive by the Bee Gees or Crazy in Love by Beyonce. Now the key is to keep your arms straight. You don't wanna go bending your elbows like that, right? Here we go. Let's run through that one more time. If you see a teen or an adult collapsed and unresponsive, what's the first thing you do? That's right, call 911. Second, you push hard and fast in the middle of the chest, just like I showed you. Thank you, American Heart Association and Children's Hospital Los Angeles, we're collaborating to bring this important message to the public. So one thing to remember as well is that CPR is extremely tiring. So if you do have others around, um, make sure that you involve them and, and get them down and show them how to do compressions because you are going to get tired. So be assertive, um, ask the person to get down their knees, put their hands on the chest and then show them how to apply the compressions and then you can switch off. I think AEDs are pretty scary to a lot of people, but I try to, to dispel those myths. I think they're over-dramatized in, in different TV shows and that we watch, but AEDs are, 
are not scary. They're extremely simple to use. So you, in, in using an AED, the most important things to know are one, where is the AED? And secondly, where is the on button? So you turn the on button on and it begins to speak to you and tell you exactly what to do. You want to continue CPR. Hopefully you have someone else around who can apply the pads, but um, even the pads have diagrams on them to show you where they should be placed on the bare chest. Uh, I don't have the pictures of, of the pads, but they, like I said, they do have the, the diagrams on them. And so the AED will say, clear the patient. Um, it's analyzing the heart rhythm. You'll wanna clear and make sure everyone else is clear and not touching the patient. It will analyze the heart rhythm and it won't give the shock unless it's necessary and it won't give the shock until you push the button. So it will say shock advised, push red button, then you will make sure everybody's clear and then you will push the button. So extremely easy to use. You just have to follow the directions. I will say one of the saddest stories that I've heard lately is the story of a, um, a basketball court in Houston. I'm not exactly sure what facility this was, but they, they had the AED. They, they had the AED and the boy collapsed in a ball game but sadly, the batteries were dead on the AED. So it is so important to make sure that you are checking your AED regularly because when you need it, you need it to be charged, you need it to be ready to go. And, and how incredibly unfortunate for, for that facility, for that um, young man who they, they had it right there, but he didn't make it because they didn't have the AED, um, the batteries checked. So. I just tell that so you can, you know, if you do have an AED, make sure you check those batteries. And that is something that should be written into the cardiac emergency response plan. So I'm excited. Um, we are going to be able to give a CPR and first aid anywhere kit to the first 40 schools that signed up. I will tell you, we've had more than 40 schools sign up. So we will put those schools um, that did not make the first 40 cut on a waiting list. And our hope, and we're very, trying very hard, is to get the funding to supply kits to every single school district that has signed up for these webinars because we want you to have all the tools and resources that you need. But the first 40 schools are going to receive uh, one of these kits. And you'll everything that you need, that your, your school needs, is included in, in this uh, red roller case, as you can see here. And the great thing about this is anybody can facilitate this training regardless of any prior CPR knowledge. So the way it is used is basically you have a facilitator, whether it's a teacher or even it could be a volunteer. They stream the educational videos and the students or the staff, whoever you're training, follows along. So it's extremely simple to use. And I'm excited because we're also going to be able to include the first aid information that includes uh, bleeding and bandaging, um, stroke, uh, how to identify a stroke, heart attack, um, look, what to look for in fainting or, or maybe a diabetic seizure, and also what to do if there's an opioid overdose. So we're very excited um, to be able to ship those out. If you haven't, um, well, when you registered, you gave uh, your address, your shipping address. So if anything has changed for that shipping address, um, you'll need to notify us. After the webinar today, we will be sending out a follow-up email that will have lots of this information, um, including the, uh, the streaming information for the videos, as well as a ton of other resources so that you'll have Courtney's contact information, you'll have my contact information, you'll have to key it, Ms. Dr. Wilson's um, information as well. We also on our website have sample cardiac emergency response plans and you're welcome to go and look at those samples. Just wanted to share that. And again, that link will be in that follow-up email. And I'm very excited because we just came out with a new recognition program for schools. And one major component of being recognized as a heart saver school is having a cardiac emergency response plan. 
there are some other components, but also I just wanted to kind of introduce this to you today. I know that, you know, with the pandemic, you guys are facing unprecedented obstacles or, or challenges, and you guys are stepping up to the plate, whether it's uh, food insecurity um, or other issues. We want to recognize schools for all that you're doing, and this is one way that we, we are working to do that. So again, that information will also be in the email today that we send out. And I'm so excited. We have Sarah Eccles, and I don't know if I'm saying your last name correctly. Pretty I'm close. <laughs> pretty close. How do you say it, Sarah? Elkos. Elkos. Okay, Sarah Elkos is the district nurse at Moffitt, Moffitt Consolidated School District. And I'm so excited for her to share. She attended our webinar, what, back in December, correct, Sarah? Correct. And so she's going to share with you guys all the success that she had and even some barriers and challenges that she overcame to implement the program. So I'm going to turn it over to you, Sarah. Thanks. I'm so glad y'all are attending. This is something very near and dear to my heart. I'm a retired ICU nurse, and now I live in a town that the closest hospital to us is 45 minutes away. We don't, we have a clinic that's occasionally open during the week, um, and we don't even have an ambulance service in our town. It's coming from another town. So that means it's really going to uh, rely on the community to actually do the CPR till we get help here. So with that being said, when I attended this, it was awesome because it really gives you easy instruction step by step. This is what you do. This is where you go. It was, it was terrific. So I read everything that was on Project Adam's website. I printed things out. I really wanted to be prepared so that when I actually talked about starting this program, it would be accepted. And it was. And so got everybody on board. Um, the SERP was easy to, to do. You really just change the school names and make it more individualized to you, your, your program. Um, the staff were on board, and I, I already teach um, AHA. I'm a BLS instructor certified, and so I'd already started teaching staff how to do um, American Heart CPR. So this was a way to get the community, the students involved. So I also sent out letters to our community because they borrow the schools for after school programs and what they're doing got the ambulance involved. They were so excited. They did want me to change our AEDs to what they use, but we already have one. And I didn't want two, three different kinds of AEDs. So we stuck with what we have. Um, the mannequins were awesome. I started out teaching fourth and fifth graders last year, the hands only. That was a challenge. Um, the fourth graders, um, uh, really got tired quickly um, and were not doing, they didn't let the chest come back up. They weren't doing great CPR. The fifth graders did. So this year it's going to be middle school. I already teach um, AHA CPR to all the seniors. So we're going to start the seniors and the juniors with that and then and have the middle school up to the 10th grade learn hands-only CPR. That, that was the biggest ob obstacle for me was I started too young with the kids. Um, and then we also uh, are not certified yet for a heart saver school because we only have one AED in each school. Um, but thank you, Davin and Courtney, because you gave me great resources and I have applied for the firehouse grant and they're supposed to determine in October. Um, so hopefully we'll get those AEDs so that I'll be able to have them out on the track. And um, if anyone goes on a field trip, we'll actually be able to send those. One will be portable for that class. So I don't know what else you want me to say, but that I just am thrilled with this program because y'all made it so easy, so uh -huh. easy to get it started and going. Well, we can't thank you enough, Sarah, for all the hard work and, and just following through with after the webinar and taking that next step to make sure that your school district is prepared. And um, we're just, we, we love it. We, we wanna share your story with, with everybody because we think it's such a success. Um, 
But we also, uh, one thing I did want to mention, we offer to every single school district that attends this webinar to meet with you and, and, and consult with you. So if that is something that you want to take advantage of, all you have to do is email myself or, or Courtney, and we will set up a time for to go through that CERT plan, fill it out. I've done with this with several other organizations, and it takes about 45 minutes. It really doesn't take that long to go through and, and make sure you have that plan written and um, personalized to your school. So thank you so much, Sarah, for, for sharing. And we are going to, in a couple of minutes, come back for a time for questions. So if you have questions for Sarah, you can go ahead and type those in the chat. But I, I actually have a video that I want to show. Um, and it's actually about a fourth grader, Sarah. So, so don't think that that your time was wasted on teaching okay. those, those fourth graders. So let me go ahead and show that video. Okay, class, today we're going to learn the steps for hands only CPR. If you had told me before I started this class that one of my students would save his mother's life through hands only CPR, I would have said, no way. What he did to save my wife's life. It was uh, a scene that I will never forget. Came in, my mother was on the floor, completely passed out. She was not breathing. Everybody else was crying, in shock. My panic caused me to freeze. But I had to do some pure. So I got on my knees and started the compressions. He took charge of the compressions that he was doing. It was amazing. He didn't stop until she moved. Her breath just opened up full of air. It's so relieved. Oh my gosh, she's here. She's not gone. My nine year old son did a chase safe for me. Oh, it's forever in my life. such an incredible, incredible story. And certainly the reason I do what I do. Um, you never know how this information is going to impact um, a student, a family in your community. Um, it, it certainly made a huge difference in Dimitri's family. And so Dimitri doesn't know, I talk about him all the time. I, I hope to meet him one day. But Dimitri actually um, was a, a third, he learned in third grade and he was, it was the summer going into fourth grade that his mom had this cardiac arrest in their living room. And he's been recognized at the state capitol in California and um, he's certainly a hero to me for sure. But I always issue what I call Dimitri's challenge at any of my presentations. So today I'm gonna challenge you guys to take this information um, the SERP uh, plan, um, modify it for your school and commit to training your, your staff and your students with these resources that we're going to provide to you. And so we can't thank you enough for, for being on the call today. Like I said, we are going to uh, share an email, follow-up email afterwards with all the resources that Sarah was talking about. So you have those easily uh, at your fingertips. Again, here is our contact information, but we do want to open it up since we have uh, about maybe 10 minutes for questions and see if there are any questions that were in the chat. If you would go ahead and, and put those in the chat, um, we would be happy to, to answer them for you. Devin, I would like to say one thing before we get there. I, one thing I do include in the uh, education I give with both the students and the teachers, we actually go to our AED and pull it out and turn it on so that they know that it'll be step-by-step -step guidance. And that's a, I think, a relief for them that they actually can hear it versus the little paper things you give. I have trainers otherwise, but I think it helps them not be so afraid. I love that. I think that's a fantastic idea. I think, you know, making that a part of your, your drill, just because it, it makes them realize that it's not going to shock them as soon as right. they touch it, because people are just scared to touch the AED. Um, so I love that you shared that. Thank you, Sarah. Elizabeth, do we have any, let's see, do we have any questions in the chat so far? 
I love seeing all of the uh, responses to where you're from. I see, I saw one that was district nurse for seven school districts. I, I don't know where that is right now, but I thought, oh my goodness, bless your heart. See, we've got a superintendent, that's fantastic. So no questions so far, and that's fine. You may think of a question later after the webinar. We'd be happy to answer those questions. Again, we'll be, we'll be shipping out um, the CPR and First Aid Anywhere kits. Hopefully we'll get those ordered tomorrow and they'll ship out next week. They are a, a larger package, so just be prepared for that. Like, you, like I said, if you need to change your shipping address for any reason, please respond to the email that we'll send out today and, and let us know before we, we ship those kits out. Any other questions or comments, Courtney or Dr. Wilson or Sarah? I think the most important thing is, is when you look at all of this information, please don't, you know, be overwhelmed because we want to try and make it as easy as possible. And we have all of those templates already available. So there's really no reason to recreate the wheel and they are easily tailored, you know, for each different school district. So certainly don't feel like this should be a burden on you. We, we really do want to make it as easy as possible and, and we want to help as much as we can. So please, 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 you know, use those resources and, and we are available to definitely assist, you know, however we can. Absolutely, yeah, thank you for mentioning that, Courtney. We, we do wanna make this simple for, for everyone. We know you have so much on your plate. I cannot even imagine being in education during this time or any time. So we are very, so very thankful for you to take time to come to the webinar and, and help your school be more prepared for cardiac emergencies. I did get a question, I think, about how will we know if we made the cutoff for the first 40 kits? And so that's a fantastic question. We will email you if you're on the waiting list. So uh, that email will probably come next week. We'll, we'll work through everything and make sure we've got all the kits ordered. And for everybody who, who came and attended the webinar today, we'll make sure we send up to that point, or to those 40 kits out this week. So you will get notified. Looking forward to seeing the templates and resources and we'll likely have questions afterwards. Well, Mandy, certainly reach out if you do. And I think Sarah, you may have mentioned this, but can you talk through the steps really quickly of how you got this approved by your leadership and how you got buy-in for this? So I actually had, I mean, y'all's templates were great. So it really gives you a step-by-step -step of this is what, do, do your assessment first. This is what you need. This is where you're short. Um, and then it, I also had already started the SERP so that I'd be prepared with that so they could just easily read it to see this is where we want to go. Uh, I'm telling you, all the templates were, I didn't, I didn't ask you about it. I didn't have questions on that. It was how do I get more backing, right? Because I needed the AEDs. I'm still working on it, but that's that was the issue. It really is a step by step. If you follow that all the way down, you know exactly where you are and what you need to do. So when I actually met with her, she was on board. And then we met, both her and I met with the principals um, and um, had bought some buy-in like for the coaches who I've already taught the CPR classes to. They were on board. So we all had this meeting. Oh, thank you, honey. So, um, Everyone was on board. So it was hard for some to say, nah. I mean, it was just great because it was easily prepared. I was prepared by your forms and everything was just flowing. So I, I can't say enough about how easy it is to get started on it. That's great. So do you have, will you be incorporating the drills into annual uh, in-service days or how do you plan to continue and make sure this continues beyond even you being in that position at your school? So when uh, I don't want it a set day, I really don't. I don't do it in the beginning. There's so much for when new teachers are onboarding. There's too much for what the teacher needs to do to really learn this. And so one, I wanna make sure they are CPR, they have it. And then two, I wanna do it periodically throughout the school year. 
So they, um, we don't have school on Fridays. So when there is a, a teacher day that they have to do, I pick one of those days. I coordinate it with the principals and the superintendent, and that's when it'll be done. Awesome, awesome. I think everybody may do it a little bit differently, and that yeah. is perfectly, perfectly okay. One thing I didn't mention is that Colorado is one of only, I think, 11 states now that does not require CPR to be taught to students before they graduate. And we want this to be an opportunity for you to be able to do that district by district and be able to implement a CPR training for your students. We recently, it's a very small world, I actually am located in, in Northwest Arkansas and was asked to do a live interview at a news station. And I, I knew I would be meeting a survivor at this particular uh, interview. And it just so happened that this person um, was saved by his son, who was 16 at the time. He actually learned CPR in schools in Arkansas, but had his cardiac arrest in Colorado while they were on a ski trip. And so, one thing I think Colorado does really well is placement of AEDs where Arkansas does not, but Arkansas has the requirement that students learn CPR before graduation. So the combination of where they lived and where they were at the time really made the outcome so positive for that family. And so the, the boy was able to apply compressions, AED was available, um, quickly and it all worked together to save his father's life. Um, so we just thank you so much for for teaching your students as well as your staff. Okay, it doesn't look to me like there's any more questions in the chat. So I think we will go ahead and end the webinar. And again, just thank you so much for joining today. All right. Thanks, everyone.